Wisconsin 1000. Wisconsin 1000 and hurry. Wisconsin 1000 and hurry. How many times that number or one like it is called every day and always in a hurry because that call means trouble, possible disaster. Who answers the call? Perhaps a carpenter, a taxi driver who knows the sound of that siren means come, come quickly. In all, in this community, 96 volunteers are ready to answer. 96 men led by an equipment dealer of Bethesda, Maryland, a town close to the capital of the United States. These men are not city employees. They are not paid by any government agency. They are not paid at all. They are men who have organized themselves into a volunteer rescue squad, one of many such squads throughout the United States, and one of the finest. Why have they organized? How are they trained? Where does this superb equipment come from? They have organized in answer to a need that exists wherever people live together in a community. A need for quick, skilled help in a moment of crisis. is there a need for a volunteer organization like this? Often the need exists because many municipal budgets cannot be stretched far enough to provide full-time emergency service like this. Sometimes the need is unfilled or only partially filled because regular departments, police, fire, do not have the men or equipment to fill it. Yes, and it goes unfilled too, because only in times of personal emergency are people concerned even though the tradition of volunteer help goes back to the beginning of a country. In America's early days, men patrolled lonely beaches to warn shipping of dangers, volunteers against a common enemy, the sea. Later, the shortwave radio operators of this country voluntarily helped in times of danger when all other communications failed. Immediate disaster always means volunteer help, but few have the satisfaction which comes to these volunteers of the Bethesda Chevy Chase Rescue Squad. The satisfaction of a job done well and the assurance of preparedness for what may come. Seeing the job is comparatively easy. Accidents are no respecters of persons. But the man who sees it cannot be indifferent. He must take the time to think about it. He must be a man like the equipment dealer of Bethesda, Donald Dunnington. Donald Dunnington grew up in Bethesda. He knew there were not adequate rescue facilities for the 70 to 80,000 people who lived here. He had the courage to try to do something about it. Out of his own pocket, he made a partial payment on a second-hand ambulance. He hoped others would help make up the balance. This was the beginning. But unless the emergency was right on top of them, people were indifferent. A good idea, they admitted, for someone else to pay for. Yet Dunnington did not give up. He kept trying. Finally, the story came before the directors of Civitan, an organization devoted to civic improvement.
When Donald Dunnington received that check, it was the thrill of a lifetime. But in times of emergency, an ambulance will not rescue people by itself. It must be manned. At first, Dunnington picked volunteer help out of the crowd. Soon, more offered their help. Others, though, learned the hard way. Listen to what this businessman had to say. Sure, Dunnington came in to see me when he was starting his rescue squad, wanted me to join. Showed the kind of work they did. A fine idea, no question about it. But you know how these things are. A man in my position has a lot of social and recreational obligations. No, I told him. Some other time, perhaps. But that some other time was going to be sooner than I knew. The following Sunday, in fact. In the hospital, I had time to do a lot of thinking. When Mr. Dunnington came in for a report of the accident, I suggested that maybe his squad could use money for new equipment. He told me they could always use money, but he'd rather see me down there helping out. There was only one answer to that. Funny, I'd been by the squad headquarters many times, but never into it. Then almost before I knew it, I was taking examinations, studying, working harder than I had worked in a long time. Yes, and enjoying it. The rescue squad continued to grow. Some joined because of an experience like that of the businessman. Others because they just wanted to help. They found that being a member of the squad meant much more than just chasing down emergency calls. First, each must learn first aid until he can meet the standards of the Red Cross. Then he must learn to care for the equipment, to save time when time saved might mean a life saved. If metal has to be cut away, he must know how to do it. When a resuscitator is needed, he must know it's ready. Actually, a man learns that 90% of good rescue work is done here in knowing how, in being prepared. All accidents, all calls are not automobile wrecks. Death comes from many hazards. An alert rescue squad must be ready to meet them at a moment's notice. Each vacation season brings its share of water accidents. Yes, 
course, this equipment is the best that money can buy. It has all been bought by volunteer donations from the community. But it's useless unless men are trained to handle it properly. Only when a man is thoroughly trained is he ready to answer the call, any call. Then, and not until then, is he ready to work his way up to a position of leadership and responsibility. Training and discipline are the answers. A fully equipped, well-trained rescue squad. This is what Dunnington saw when he wrote his first check as part payment for an ambulance. A squad of volunteers whose work, added to the work of regular police, fire, and other municipal agencies, provide total protection for his community. Total protection means protection 24 hours a day. An emergency doesn't wait, even in the dark hours of early morning. The volunteer night watch is the answer. 14 men on instant call, all night, every night. Men who have voluntarily given up many of their daily pleasures so that others may find help in time of need. Some sleep at the station, others at home, but ready for immediate action. At a time like this, the long months of training, the instant response to discipline, pay in full measure. Perhaps it's a fire at night. The rescue squad works closely with the municipal fire department, helping wherever help is needed. Or it might be the desperate need of a child suddenly stricken. Speed, skill, training, discipline. These are the answers. The women of Bethesda found their places in the organization too. A household temporarily deprived of its mother needs care, and it gets care from the women's auxiliary to the rescue squad. Dunnington had not foreseen this group, Yet, when it was organized, it filled the final need. Because here the story gets told, not once, but many times. Here, money is raised to carry on the work. Through their efforts, through bingo games, bake sales, benefit suppers, much of the $35,000 fund annually needed is raised. With their help, the annual drive for funds moves smoothly, meets willing response. Volunteer funds for a volunteer rescue squad. Yes, this is far from one second-hand ambulance. A man even has time to relax for a moment, but not for long. Not when the phone number is Wisconsin 1000, because that number is more than a number. It is a symbol, part of a way of life that has grown with this country. And the tradition behind it, perhaps it's not seen, not understood until disaster threatens or until a man with vision and courage decides to do something about it. Then it comes awake, eagerly awake, and the job gets done as it should get done by volunteers who recognize a responsibility and accept it. <laughs>